That's a lie. La 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 la. You ain't got. Why you got to lie for Craig? All right. It's a la 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 la. God is living and active in your life. He is dealing with you on a personal and intimate basis. He is interwoven. Not only is he in, he's outside of space, matter, energy, and time. He is so awesome that he also fills space, matter, energy, and time. Amen. So he is dealing with, not only is he separate and apart, but he uses specifically the Holy Spirit and the incarnate Jesus to fill space, matter, energy, and time and begins to deal with you on a personal, living, functional level. That's why we know he is alive. We know he is alive because we pray for folk and they get better. We know he is alive because he has manifested himself to us in a very living and active way. If you are saved today, the day he saved you, he made the fact that he was alive known to you. So what do we know about God? We know he is one and we know he is living. So we believe that he is one. Uh, that he is the God, that he is the, the one true God, and he is the living God. Amen. Joshua in three, three, uh, Joshua chapter three, verse 10, uh, 10, Joshua said, hereby ye shall know that the living God is among you. Amen. David, before he put a whooping on, 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 uh, uh, Goliath, he said, thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he have defiled the armies of, guess what? The living God. Amen. David in Psalms 42 verse 2 says, my soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 10 verse 10 says, but the Lord is the true God. He is the living God and an everlasting king. Amen. So we got to understand that when Peter, when Jesus in Matthew chapter 16 verses 12 through 16, when Peter was asked by Jesus, who do you say that I am? Guess what Peter said? Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. So our God is living. He is active. He is involved. He is not some, some, a uh, trifling landlord that done given us this broken up house and left us and you on your own to fix your house. Okay. So not only is he one, not only is he living, he is the true God. And what is truth? You always remember this is a deep definition. Remember this, write this down, write this down, write this down. Truth is reality. Truth is reality. That's why, you know, reality TV ain't truth. Ah, reality TV ain't truth, but truth is reality. And guess what? Our God is real. So he is the reality. He is truth. Amen. He is the true God. Now, why is this important? Why is this distinction of the true God important? It's because you have to always step back and remember that there are many gods. Always remember this. God, the word God is nothing but a title. In order to stay current with the young folks, I listen to the Breakfast Club. You listen to the Breakfast Club? There's this knucklehead on the Breakfast Club. His name is Charlemagne the God. My, in the 1990s, when I, my favorite rapper, his name was Rakim Allah or Rakim the God. There's all kind of people. When you watch basketball, now I don't like it, but people in basketball, they try to call, uh, 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 they, they call up to the basketball gods. Brother John, it blew my mind. Shane Battier got a degree in theology from Duke University, and that brother gonna talk about the basketball gods were good to him. I'm like, bro, what kind of Jesus you believe in? All right? So there's all kind of people who believe in gods, but we believe in the one true and living true God. Amen. And the scriptures bear out about the true God in John 17 and three is, and this is life eternal that they might know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. Amen. That's what the scriptures testify in John 17 and three. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 20, And we know that the Son of God has come and have given us an understanding that we may know him that is true, and we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. 
So that's what the scriptures manifest in 1 John chapter 5, verse 20. 1 John chapter 5, verse 20. The scriptures bear manifest that it says that he is the true God and eternal life. So we, what do we know so far? Let's back it up. Back it up, back it up, back it in. There's only one. There's only one God. We know that God is living. That's the second thing we're learning tonight. We know that God is true. And the third thing that we're about to, or the fourth thing that we're about to learn is that, and we touched on it last week, God is infinite. We cannot comprehend an infinite God with our finite minds. We cannot comprehend an infinite God with our finite mind. Even what we know about God, it's just a dab because your mind is finite. Yeah. Like this is your mind and this is God. Okay, so you're, you're only touching on just a sliver of what God is. Amen. It's only a sliver, and and, and you can only con you can you can only understand him. You can only stand a portion of him. You can't really even understand the full thing, but he has revealed himself. He has revealed himself, and there is elements of God that you need to know. You'll never understand everything about God. Just like what James White said on that video that I sent to y'all that I posted for y'all to check out. Here's something you got to understand. There is no, you know, many of us as preachers, we use all these analogies to try to help you understand the Trinity. But there's no perfect analogy because there's nothing in creation like the Trinity. Because there's nothing in creation that has that kind of symmetry or that kind of elegance or that kind of unity. There's nothing in creation that rolls that tight. That's that beautiful that sticks together. There's nothing in creation like that. So there's no analogy that's perfect. So if you ever give it like one of the big analogies is Father, Son, Holy Ghost is ice, steam and water kind of thing. They all water, but they got three different. They come in three different forms. All right. All right. That's one analogy that people like. But what I'm trying to share with you is all of the analogies break down when it comes to explaining God, especially in the Trinity, from this standpoint, is that there's nothing in nature that reflects all of the elements of the Trinity. All of the analogies will fail because it's like that song, nothing compares to you. All right. And I ain't gonna sing that one. All right. But my point to you is that. There's no comparison. You can only understand just a little bit. All right. You can understand just a little bit. All right. Now, the next element of God that you got to understand is that we believe that there is one, only one true and living God. And that he is an infinite. And the next point is he is an intelligent. All right. He is an intelligent spirit. Amen. The intelligent spirit. He is an intelligent spirit. And what do we mean by that? He has the ability to process information. He processes. Not only did he process information through a plan that he established, and not only does he step outside of time and does he um, change and that he does he shape everything and nothing surprises him outside of time. He steps into time and processes information and engages with you. He is an intelligent spirit. He is not just some inanimate. Uh, so, so why is this important? Let's break this down. Um, and I, when I was young, I used to fiddle with this thought that maybe God isn't what we think he is. Maybe he is a conglomeration of, he is a conglomeration of, of many principles that are everlasting. So as an example, you know, maybe God is a combination of love and peace and numbers and everything else. But my point to you is if he's a if he is a conglomeration of those things, he is an intelligent con a conglomeration where he is processing, he's involved, he's active with you, he's responding to you. This is not some machine that you are dealing with. This is not some force of nature that you are dealing with. This is not, and, and, and the big thing where you get into the, um, 
especially with my my fellow Jedi's, is you get people who are into Jedi stuff or certain types of Eastern mysticisms or Eastern meditations where they believe in a concept of God, but for them, God is energy. Another big thing for people who are into quantum physics and everything else is that, that they have discovered that all of us are vibrating and we give off a uh, um, an energy or a aura about ourselves. Well, yeah, whether that's true or not, I'm not doubting that or hating on that or whatever else, but you got to understand that while God has energy, and energy is an element of God, God is not just energy. He, God, as much as I love Star Wars, amen, God is not the force, okay? God is not the force, okay? So, you know, when people go and say, may the force be with you, well, the force is just this inanimate object that, it, I mean, it's this energy that it has a flow to it, and and that's what that's why much as y'all love uh, I'm talking about you Carmen I'm talking about you Carmen I I'm just playing Carmen I ain't talking about you but as much as we all love Will Smith when Will Smith gets on the Tavis Smiley so show and he starts talking about there's an energy and you just gotta be down with the energy and you gotta pray with the energy you can bend the universe to make the universe flow how you want it to flow blah, 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 blah. I love Will all right love Will. Understand this, when Will gets on the Tavis Smiley show and starts talking about the universe and flow and all this other stuff, that <clears throat> that is not in line with your <clears throat> with your concept of the true God. Okay? And why is this dangerous? Is because when these icons on the movies or whatever else, when they get on TV and they start talking that talk and they are start talking all these things that sound quasi spiritual. It's easy for Christians to get to get sucked in. You got this millionaire who's successful at everything in life, and he's got all these millions and all this other stuff. And at that time, when he went on the Tavis Smiley show, he went and and you know he was successful, and none of his movies had bombed, and everything he was touching was turning to gold. And then he starts talking about the universe and energy, and, and that's one of the biggest self help videos that are on face that is on Facebook or that's on YouTube is Will Smith's talk with Tavis Smiley. Now, if you Google that, you need to pray before you watch it. Let me say that two more times. If you Google Tavis Smiley and Will Smith, you need to pray before you watch it. Let me say it one more time. If you Google that, Will Smith and Tavis Smiley, you need to pray and protect your spirit before you're watching it. Because they're talking about the force. They're talking about the secret. They're talking about this energy. The only thing is, if it's just energy, it's not going to tell you that you a sinner. It's not going to tell you how you need to change direction in your life. If it's just energy, you just catching the wave. You you're like what's the name of that Sprite commercial? You catching the catching the wind or whatever else, okay? No, 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 no. Our God is an intelligent spirit. Amen. Where you not he's not just some dumb energy that's flowing. No, 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 no. He is interacting with you. He is observing you. He is watching you. Amen. All that lies that they told about Santa, there is some truth about God. Amen. So understanding is Ephesians 3 and 10, it says to the intent and now unto the principles and principalities and powers and heavenly places might be known by the church, the manifold wisdom of God. And one of my favorite verses in the Bible, John 4, 24, God. And if you have, if you don't memorize any other scripture in the Bible, you need to have this one in your spirit. God is a spirit. And they who worship him, worship him in spirit.